Hey everyone, welcome to this quick tutorial of how I paint my floral alphabets. So I start by lining the first petal with a mix of crimson and vermilion shade. I'm using my Princeton Velvet Touch No. 6 Long Round Brush. The long round range really has a pointy tip which helps to give the really fine edges which you mostly need when you are painting details. I quickly cover up the edges and load them with pigment so that I can wash my brush and start pulling the pigment in. By doing this, I am creating a really light wash but crisp clean edges. I darken the pigment a little using the same shade and going in to paint the dark areas of the petal where I want the shadows to come. I further add some more pigment on the inner areas of the petal where it is supposed to be the darkest. I will darken these areas further as we move along. Whisper. Amen. Once dried, these areas will all look very blended, so don't worry about that. I start the second petal in the same way by going over the edges first. This time, however, I have made the petal a little wet by spraying water over it. I did this just to make the color move around freely on the paper and give it that natural look. Again, I'm darkening some areas where I believe the shadow is falling. And I really don't have a proper reference from for this. I am just taking reference from almost my imagination. Also, if you are wondering how I have masked the H alphabet, it is using art masking fluid. Art masking fluids are really great. I would tell everyone to invest in it because if you are a watercolor artist, it actually saves you a lot of time. As you can see now, I have added a little bit of Payne's Grey to my color mixture. Payne's Grey is a bluish grey, so blue and red would actually give you a violetish tinge. So that actually works to darken my inner corners. And as you can see, it dries up into this nice shade, dark shade. I'm using that same shade to give a little more definition to the lines on the petals. To give it a little more realistic look. And I'm using the same, sh same shade for the stamen of the flower. I believe it's called the stamen. And... I'm using water to pull off some pigment so that there is like a slight contrast between the petals and the stamen. Moving on to the leaves, I have used a mixture of lemon yellow, sap green and a mix of cerulean blue and lemon yellow. I don't really bother about the greens while painting watercolor leaves because I kind of like them loose like this. I believe watercolor leaves get their definition from the various shades of yellows and greens and blues that we add. Finally, I'm giving some last minute touches to the steam in the pollen. And this is my favorite part. I love this, but be careful not to damage the paper. 
And there you have it. Let me know if you recreate this.